Some folks can shoot quickly, others can shoot accurately, but finding that unique individual to be able to do both, that's tough. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, the grip and how it relates to speed shooting and combative shooting. Now when you talk about the grip at a shooting at a high rate of speed, you're really trying to create leverage on the gun. Get as high as possible as you can get, so that way as the gun is lifting up and back, it's not going to be able to lift quite as high. So what I want to do is get two points of contact with my firing hand. My first point of contact is the web of my hand, as high as possible on the back strap of the pistol. Second point of contact is going to be just in front of that middle knuckle underneath the trigger guard. Again, getting as high as I possibly can get. My third point of contact is going to be the index finger of my non-firing hand underneath the trigger guard, again getting as high as I possibly can get on the pistol. And last, I want to make sure I have both thumbs pointed out toward the downrange area to ensure that I have an index, but more importantly, that my support hand is placed at a 45 degree angle downward. Now with my support hand placed at a 45 degree angle downward, I'm creating a mechanical advantage on the pistol before it lifts in recoil, and that's important. So now, before the gun lifts off of that target, I've created that mechanical advantage to keep it flatter on target for that additional follow-up shot or many shots thereafter, if needed. So what's happening there, with my support hand at a 45 degree angle downward, I'm locking that wrist into place. By locking that wrist into place and having some sort of traction on my grip, whether it be grip tape or stippling on that grip itself, it's going to bite into that palm. So as the gun's trying to lift up and back, that wrist is not going to allow it to lift quite as high. Grip pressure is also very, very important when you talk about a two-handed grip. As far as my right hand or my strong hand, I want to make sure I have 30 to 40 percent of the pressure of my firing hand and 60 to 70 percent with my non-firing hand. And the reason why that is, is I want to make sure that I'm able to manipulate that trigger at a high rate of speed if I need to rapidly, but also very smoothly and consistently straight back to the rear if I need to make an accurate shot. Now what is 30 to 40 percent pressure? If you had a hammer in your hand and you were driving a nail into a piece of wood, that's about how much pressure I have in my firing hand. So I have control over it, but I'm not death gripping it. Now my support hand just has twice as much pressure and it's doing a lot of the work on the recoil management side. <laughs> Lastly, trigger finger placement is also very important when you talk about shooting at a high rate of speed with acceptable accuracy. What I'm looking for is the meaty portion of that first digit flat on the trigger. At that point I can press the trigger straight back to the rear quickly and I won't disturb the sight off of that target. Now if I had just the tip of my finger on the trigger or I had too much finger into that trigger, it will influence and affect where that round is actually being impacted downrange. <laughs> Techniques are one thing, but when you talk about setting up your gear, that's also equally important. There's a lot of great guns out there, but not all of them are set up for you or I. So make sure when you get that pistol and you make that purchase, you set it up specifically for your ability and what you're trying to accomplish. Maybe you're stippling the grip, adding grip tape, contouring the trigger guard, whatever it is to get as high as possible on that gun and create as much leverage as possible. Hey, I'm Max Michelle, and I'm on Gun District. Why aren't you? 